Alrighty, I thought it'd be a good idea, I'm um, in hope of getting a few more mission makers on board, uh, to put up a couple of videos uh, just showing what I've learnt over my time doing missions uh, that I've basically pulled off different tutorials myself and uh, forum posts. Basically, if you look up something you want to do, you'll generally find a video or forum post telling you how to do it. Now, it's not going to be uh, too in depth, it's just the um, starting off uh, mission making because I really haven't got into it, even scratched the surface myself. So much more you can do with scripting and Lua files, and I'm not going to go into any of that. I'm just going to keep it simple and um, just show you basically what I've learnt, and hopefully, some people can give me some pointers um, once they've watched this if they've learnt something else and different way of doing things. But here we go. Uh, so first of all, let's just jump straight into the mission editor. Now, I've already uh, been into this uh, map, but uh, you probably, if you did it first time, have this pop up. New mission settings. So this basically sets your sides. Blue force, red force. Gives you your maps that you've got, um, depending on what uh, um, add-ons you've got. Uh, I've got, it uh, comes up as a default uh, modern one, but uh, you can set whatever side. I've got a little custom one, just a few changes in there, but yeah, just find what you want, press OK, and you're on the map. So, starting on the map, you have all the airfields only, and two other icons. They're your bullseyes. Um, so quickly, what it's a bullseye? Bullseye is your reference point for your side that all your AWACS calls and your basically all your sides will reference from. Now, because it's co-op, uh, we usually do, we don't really need to worry about setting the red one, but if you're doing a PvP uh, map, then you would uh, worry about that. I'm not. Now, it's if you don't set it, if you have it somewhere random, uh, still you'll get by because AWACS will call out bra calls from the actual each flight um, to the enemy. So, but if you want like a picture or basically if you want your flight to be able to reference something, it's good to have it. Let's just say where it was over Pody here on this little inlet. And that can be our bullseye. So if I'm flying around and my other flights want to reference something, just say uh, north east of bullseye, like 20 miles or whatever, and you'll be able to spot the general area they mean. And if you've got a, a carrier here, you can just reference bullseye as the feet dry mark. And you'll get all your picture calls um, from the flights, and just visually you can kind of flying without even looking at the map you'll know where it is um, just by reference because you'll have a, an idea where it is so it is kind of a, it is important to set it in a good spot all right let's run down the list here on the left these are all your options that you can do for the mission uh, first of all files pretty straightforward that's where you create a new one open and save make sure you save sample mission yes <laughs> Um, often, if you look at that list there, if I open it again, open, there you'll see I have several numbers next to them. I like to back up and back up and back up because <laughs> uh, sometimes you'll press save and want to go back, change something you've um, done, and you can't get back to it. So, common tip. Um, okay, so then the mission section here. Now in the mission se section is where you set all your parameters for your mission, including first of all the briefing. Uh, let's call a name, let's call it example, uh, can't spell, mission. Very creative. Um, briefing panel, you can put pictures. This is where you, when you start the mission there's a little pop up there with the briefing. You can make pictures if you want. Um, I don't fuss around too much with that, uh, but you can do it. Situation, quick rundown of what the situation um, you're facing, or the current uh, um, 
so whatever's happening in the um, AO. And then you've got uh, your tasking for Blue Force and Red Force. Now in here you'd have all your briefing and anything related to the mission. It's important to have all your call signs, radio frequencies. Well, not so much call signs, just your radio frequencies for each flight. Um, and anything you can think of that will be important for the mission, including tanker frequencies and tacans and anything like that. Um, I will show in another video how to put this stuff on a knee board as well, uh, but you'll always have it in this section as well. Just for people that can't use knee boards like VR users that apparently have troubles. Um, next tab we have weather. Now this is where you set all your weather obviously and your start time and date. Now it is um, accurate to moon phases so bear that in mind you can look up moon phases on the internet and put the date in you'll actually have it accurate. Uh, if you're doing a night mission you can uh, base it on that so bear that in mind. Um, time, uh, clouds, switch your base, let's set it 6000 with a base of about Oh, sorry, thickness of 1600, that'll do. Uh, density is how overcast you want it. 10 is overcast and then scattered uh, further down. Precipitation if you want some rain. Um, wind if you want some wind. That's the direction you can set. Let's give it, say, 10 knots. And actually um, goes at that height as well, changes that. In reference to it so that's the wind then you've got fog now if you're using fog or dust be careful because it can look great in some areas like up in the mountains but horrible down below so if you're taking off from a certain area make sure you have a look all around the map just to make sure it looks good wherever you've got it um, next section here is triggers which I'll get to in another video um, that I never use mission goals. Um, battlefield commanders is I think for combined arms mainly and next important one is mission options. This is where you set basically the difficulty of your mission. Um, you got two columns. You got enforce and you got value. I tick all enforce. So I'm enforcing anything that is on the right. So just tick them all and and then have a look. Um, I don't want to recover crash. External views I keep on. It's good for spectating and screenshots. <laughs> um, F10 map view. If you don't want anyone to use an F10 view or the map, you can take it all off or you can just have the map only and no icons. I keep it on allies uh, and for the only reason really that if you don't have it on allies, then whoever's spectating won't be able to uh, switch between the fl planes and players so they won't be able to see what other planes are doing and I think having that as a spectator option is good for anyone that um, is not flying or something's happened or they've finished the mission while other people are still doing something so I keep that ticked. For the mission making purposes always keep it to all so you can see everything that's going on including the enemy. So I'm going to keep that to all but make sure you switch it back at the end when you're ready to go. All right, further down, labels, don't want on, this is all making it easier. The only other one I keep on is wake turbulence. So I want that and GFX simulation. Um, I keep user marks on, so if someone in the briefing especially wants to mark something, they can do that. Uh, civilian traffic, this one I switch off just because I'm doing a um, convoy mission. And I want that to be uh, be able to see it clearly. Bird strikes, uh, let's keep that off for now and I'll keep the other stuff off. So yeah, that's what I usually start a mission with. I just switch it back to allies when ready to go. Um, this is to fly it if I want to fly. Um, and then you've got all the um, what you're going to put down. So let's get into it. Uh, I think I'll start at Cobbledy um, as an airfield. So grab a plane. Now I'm going to set up the player flights first of all. Um, 
let's just whack that. So basically select the plane, whack it down. That's going to default this uh, plane in flight. Um, if you look over here, it's got it at 6,000 feet at 240 knots. So this one's currently in the air. Now it's defaulted to an A10. So just select which ones you want. I'm going to fly some F-18s. So let's check that. Now all the ones in yellow, incidentally, are your playable aircraft. And anything in grey is just the... Um, AI. So choose which one you want to do. Uh, bear in mind if you don't see your plane there it's probably because you haven't got the right country. So make sure like I won't have an F-14 in there because uh, that's only USA. So make sure you've got your right country. Uh, give your group a name so I'm going to call it ASORCAS uh, you can put the like F18 if you want. Uh, generally, it's going to be in the selection screen, so it's not really important. Um, task. I want this one as a CAS, so select it CAS. You can get by without doing that. Um, it does affect your loadouts, your presets, if people aren't manually putting them in, but. Most people choose their weapons manually, so it doesn't really matter, but I still think it's important um, or a good idea to select what role it is there. And it also comes up in the selection role too, so I don't even really need this. Um, but it's just good to have. Alright, so units uh, is when I want to add more of them, which I'll do in a sec. I won't do it just now, I'll tell you why. Um, moving down, skill is the next important thing. Average, average, good, high, excellent, and random is all AI. So that's what you choose for AI. And then we want client. So it's a playable aircraft for multiplayer. Player is more for a single player if you're just putting one player down. Um, all right, so let's click at client. Pilot doesn't really matter. You can name your pilots, but um, you don't really have to do it. Um, tail number I didn't usually pay too much attention to, but now we've got the super carrier, it is coming to play, so I will be setting those, um, making sure they're all different and unique. At the moment, I'll just keep this one 010. Call sign frequency is your starting radio frequency when you start up the jet. Call sign um, I set for every flight, um, we do use. Uh, for ASO in um, Griffin and Merlin for Cap and Cass or vice versa uh, but I still set all of these separately because that's what the AWACS will be referencing and you don't want five end fields gets a bit confusing all right so these here um, you can hide stuff on the map but I am oops um not going to go into all that too much late activation i will get to in the next video that is when you're spawning um, things in late to the mission i'll just keep it off for now so i've got our plane he's flying at 6,000 feet so let's set him up first of all i want him to take off uh, from the airfield uh, so down in type you've got different types of waypoints, flyover points, takeoff runway ramp, hot spot, parking hot and landing. I want him taking cold and dark at the ramp. Bang, down he goes. Now he's automatically been put into a bay there. If I wanted say 24 over here, just click parking and put him in where you want him on the airfield. I'll keep him at 21. Um, the altitude has defaulted to 59, uh, that's the height of the airfield, so don't stress if you see it higher than, it's not, doesn't mean it's in the air, it's above sea level. So bear that in mind, and when setting just general target waypoints, um, it's going to be not zero, but if you, you always just press zero and you'll see it default to the lowest point. 
Um, speed, don't worry about that because I'm taking off from the ramp. And start time is whatever time the mission um, was defaulted to. So I uh, got a playable aircraft. Um, if I go into it, fly a mission, yes, save. Now, the first time you load into a mission, um, I did load this map earlier. It might be a bit longer, but every time you load back into it, it'll be a lot quicker. So there's our um, plane. Like I said, it's got the unit, ace or cas. Um, it's also got cas there, like I said, but some of those are good to have it in the group name. Double click on there, and I am in the cockpit. Pause for effect. So I'm good to fly. Plane is down. I'm in um, bay 21. The other bays were in the hangars over here. So yeah, plane is down. Now <laughs> let's go through the other options you got for the plane. Weapons. You can do default loadouts for your flights, or you can leave it empty. I generally leave it empty. Let the guys um, or girls select what they want um, but you can do preload loadouts bear in mind though depending on what your role is this will change what the presets are uh, you got to pitch down here so you know what the plane looks like you can set your pacifics up with fuel and everything there but generally that's going to be selected by the player who spawns in. Um, this one here I uh, haven't used or gone into um, so that's something I'm still going to have to learn. Uh, summary I've never done either and failures you can set failures. Alright so and this one I've never used so pretty much one two three four parts of this I haven't even got into but I can still do functioning missions. Uh, the next important one is presets. Uh, I think it's important to set presets uh, for your flights. Uh, F-18 has two um, a very good uh, radio. It sets uh, UHF and uh, FM, AM and goes bands right low to high and yeah. Uh, very good uh, radio. So here I'm just going to quickly set up and then leave this 305. I don't mind. So I usually leave the top one for uh, the flight each um, section to choose whatever they want to um, transmit on. Uh, channel 2, I think I'm using 127 for the AWACS. I'll usually set that as AWACS. Then the tankers. Uh, I think of my other one that's 252 and 253. A couple of tankers up there, and this one here, channel 5, is usually set as the airfield frequency. If you click on the airfield, it tells you the frequencies of the tower. So I'm going to use 262, go back to my plane, and set channel 5, 262. And I'm going to replicate on the second radio. So one, two, six, two. All right, so I'm not going to worry about the rest of the presets. That's enough. So I've got my flight channel, my AWACS, my two tanker channels, and the airfield. Uh, if they were taken off from a carrier or a different airfield, I'd set that accordingly. So that's all done. You've got a plane set up. Um, now, if you want an extra, like a wingman or flight of four, you can go up to four, you just click this arrow. One, two, three, four. All right. Let's see, I can't go any more for you. If you need uh, more than that, you'll have to do a new flight. Uh, so there, I've got a, I've got a work in flight. Um, now, if I click on here and check the radio frequency, you can see it's replicated everything I've done in that first flight, first um, plane. That is why I wait until I've set everything up in frequencies before I add the others. Otherwise you'd have to go through again or take them back out and add them again. Um, so yeah, just wait till you've got everything set up and then boom, boom, boom. So yeah, there we go. We've got infill flight here. 
on the ramp, ready to go when I fly that. Save. You'll see the selection screen has all four. Now it's put them all at a client, so it's just copied paste, and you'll see the tail number is also changed incrementally, which is very handy, so you don't have to set each tail number new. It will do that automatically when you do the flight, which is very cool. Of course I won't see the flight when I'm in the cockpit because I'm just one player here and no one will be next to me. So we've got our flight down. Um, now you can set waypoints. I'm going to do that in a second because I need to know what the mission is and where I'm going. So let's start putting some enemy down. Um, so you've got here planes, choppers, ships, ground units, tanks and all that and your static objects. So I'm going to make a convoy here, so I'm going to click tank and how about we put it on this nice straight road here. Um, so there's my new mission, mission group, um, vehicle group I should say. It's come up defaulted to Russia, which is fine by me, so let's go bang. We have, if I zoom right in, a BTR on the road. Uh, this little arrow will put his direction. Oh, incidentally, what I did there when I'm right clicking off the picture, when you place something, it's automatically going to have a waypoint to add. So if you click elsewhere on the map, it's going to put a waypoint down, uh, which you'll do often <laughs> accidentally. So it's in habit, I usually just play something and then right click away from it and it will disappear. You've got to click a couple of times or you can just click it on edit and it will do the same thing. But um, yeah, so let's have a look. Let's just place him back again. So first of all, you want to give it a name. Um, you don't have to name your AI, but it's very handy if you're working out which group is what, especially when you get into triggers and everything. So just get in the habit of naming your groups. So I'm going to call this Convoy. Um, don't know why I like capitals, but so be it. Convoy. Um, all right, so we're going to keep it Russia and I keep it one of one for now. Um, select which one you want. You've got your selection of Russian armor there. You've also got artillery, all different types of um, road vehicles. So let's do armor, let's do T90. If you want to have a look at it, you can click this one. It gives you a nice cool little picture. So you know what's what. You can even change the, let's change the order. Doesn't change the damn thing. All right, but yeah, not sure why that's not changing. Is it changing? I just blind up, it's not changing. All right, so um, I've got my tank down. Now, altitude's 30 feet, because that's the um, altitude. If you look down here, shows you the altitude of where your mouse pointer is and the latitude and longitude too, incidentally. All right, so Currently it's defaulted 30 feet, which is ground level, and 11 knots speed. Um, and the start time, which is when the mission starts. Now, next thing I do would be to set up a waypoint for him. Otherwise he's just going to be sitting there when he spawns in. So, because he's on a road, um, first of all I'm going to go to type here. This is all your formation for your either convoy or flights I'm going to put him on road and you can see him sort of shift there he's facing this way but that's because I haven't got a waypoint set for him but he's fixed to that road at the moment so if I put a add waypoint um, let's see if I can get him that's a train station I think oh I'm clicking on the railway Click it on the road and you can see that's put it to the nearest road there and you can see that white line it is all along that road so and if I put him back to here you'll see he's facing the right way. 
So when I spawn in, he will be moving at 11 knots up to that waypoint. Very simple. Now before I get in and display that, I'm going to give him some friends. So make him an actual convoy. So you just click here. Let's give him six, five friends. Um, it's all going to copy paste this T90. If you want, oops, see what I did there? It had the waypoint added still. Clicked it. When I went to select that one, it's put a waypoint. So you just delete that and click edit or right click off here then select something get into the habit of doing that uh, subconsciously but you'll always be placing waypoints accidentally it's just the way it is um, so yeah if i want to change any of these i can um, let's make this one a btr let's change it from armor to unarmed one let's put a Yes, oh, that's a civilian one. There's a Ural, there it is. So I've got it. A fuel Ural. Let's do another troop Ural. Let's put an air defense in there. We don't want any in placement. We want maybe uh, one of these. And the end one can be a tank. So I've got a bit of defense there. Um, actually, let's be really mean and change that to air defense and maybe make it a Estrella. There we go. <laughs> so we've even got a Sam in there. Um, so you can make whatever. Um, however um, strong your convoy you want and you can have it in there actually incidentally you'll see each one I should have set this to excellent first up before I copied paste everything or added the extra ones I like to put them more to excellent because I want them alert and at their best capabilities and excellent so yeah, I've got my convoy, so let's jump in and see that in action. Yes, I want to save. Alright, there goes our flight again. Let's just jump in. You can already see the convoy there. Okay, I think F7 view is the convoy. And there is my convoy. Moving out. Heading down to the railway station at that town down yonder at 11 knots. Very cool. And let's get back to the mission editor. A couple more things I'll point out is first of all, if you look at this waypoint down here, click on that, it actually gives you the ETA at that speed to arrive. And that's very handy for planning times for missions and timing everything so it's going to take 50 minutes to get from that point to that point very handy also if I move if I click on the very first um, vehicle and move it it will move everything in that group so the lead vehicle will move the whole group now if I move this one separately it's going to go back. That's because I've got it on road. If I go off road and I click and on this vehicle, you will actually offset. So you can place your vehicles. Just say they were stationary um, artillery group or something. I can just set them up in a certain formation on the ground. But when I move the lead one, it will move everything. So bear that in mind, especially if you're around a house, say. And these were infantry and you're setting up a defense like so and then you um, want to move this one to the house and you're like oh crap so make sure you always set your lead to where you want it and then everything else accordingly a quick tip um, so put him back on the road let's change it back to on road and that puts more back in 
Um, so that's my convoy. I've got my convoy. I've got my flight. Uh, next up, um, how about we put in a aircraft enemy flight? So click on aircraft, just whack it down, and that will default to whatever I last left with. So first of all, I want to do is Russia. Let's name it uh, MiG-29 Group. Let's make it cap. Let's change it to a MiG-29. Skill, excellent. Um, don't have to worry about tail numbers for AI. And call signs and all the frequencies. You don't have to worry about any of that. Um, just make sure you set the skill, whatever you want it. Um, and yeah that's the AI down so let's give him a waypoint it's already on add actually let's set him altitude first I want him say 30,000 430 knots will do um, he's just going to spawn in at 30,000 feet when the mission starts at that speed um, now let's give him a waypoint let's put him say here DP is, I'm not sure what that stands for, DP. Basically, it's your N1. <laughs> um, and then you can place, let's say, I want him to go from here to here. So it's waypoint one, and then your N1 there. And let's say if I just want him to fly back to Sukumi. Now in waypoint here, I can put land in and then he'll go land. Um, so when you put a plane down, it's handy to actually set him at your height that you want. So each subsequent waypoint will do the same. You can change it in whatever waypoint you want, but yeah, it's good to have it. So if you set it default to 6,000, the next one will be 6,000. So set your flight up first, what height you want him at. Now, if I do this and the mission starts, he's just going to go boom, boom, and land. But I might want him to hang around for a bit, which will be handy. So by the time I get there, he's not back at base. So if I click waypoint one, go to add, oh, sorry, advanced waypoints, and go to, it's already got cap because I've selected cap up here as a task. If I go to add, you get some extra options for each waypoint. So here, perform tasks. So I've got a few here. I want perform task. I want him to orbit. That number, um, that number two is the reference here. So it's number two in the list. Um, and I, it's two circle and racetrack. Now circle will put him circling around this waypoint. A racetrack. Um, I'm not sure if it was meant to, if you put a circle, it meant to do a circle around these two, but I don't find it works. If I do racetrack, it's actually going to go from here to here to here to here. Now that's not a huge turning point for him anyway, so he'd probably go a bit wider. Um, but yeah, and I'll just put that at 450 knots at 30,000 feet. And that's going to put him from wherever, because I've got this on the number one waypoint. So whatever your next waypoint is, is the area he's going to be going between. So he's going to do racetrack pattern, back and forth, but only for a certain amount of time before he heads back and goes there. Probably only one racetrack. So what I also want to do is go to condition, or stop condition, sorry. And I'm going to put duration, five hours. <laughs> I'm just going to leave him flying for five hours. He's going to run out of fuel at some point and head back to base. But um, yeah, so if I set the stop condition, so he's going to go in the orbit to waypoint one. He's going to do that for five hours. Okay, so now we've got the plane in. So let's go have a look at him. There he is there. Fly. Yeah, I think I'll press F2. There is our MiG at 30,000 feet. 
heading down to the convoy. Let's go to the map. You'll see everything on the map here. So I've got the map options as enemy as well. There's our convoy and there's our plane. So let's speed up time. Now the MiG-29 in theory should come to here. Like I said, it's not too much um, distance for the, the plane. So he's probably going to go in a wider orbit, but He'll turn here, do his racetrack up to the other waypoints and hopefully come back. Jeez, he's taking his time to turn. What speed is he doing at? A bit sharper bank would be handy. Cracky. Bit faster. So basically he's doing a racetrack, a very wide one, but it serves the purpose. And he, in theory, again, I should go until he runs out of fuel and not stop. Let's see one more track and that hopefully won't make her a liar of me. Now generally I am not going to start um, uh, activity off from the start of the mission. They're not going to spawn in. I'm going to do late activations, which I'm going to show in the next video. But uh, yeah, that's just showing that off. So he's just on his merry way until he runs out of fuel. Let's quit there. So we've learned how to put um, vehicles down and planes down. Incidentally, one thing I forgot is always when you're doing all this to start up, <laughs> give them a loadout. <laughs> very common to <laughs> miss your loadouts but yeah set whatever loadout you want so they got some weapons um, and yeah you've got your mission uh, your that and that's basically your enemy set up um, if you want to let's show you one other thing you can do there's one called here a template and in templates you can actually make your own templates um, by selecting groups and creating them but I'm just going to use this because I want a SAM site down so let's put a SA6 and our template's handy because if you say I want a SA6 site here boom it's already set up for you this SA6 site with some trucks and launches and everything there makes it very handy and simple uh, just click off there so now um, if I zoom out you'll see these rings here are the threat ranges so that's the SA6 so if I fly into this area I'll get an SA6 warning and this is the launch threat area and similarly the convoy has the threat rings around it as well um, so yeah that's basically my targets are down I've got a convoy I've got some threat with SAMs and an aircraft now the one thing I haven't got is click on my flight is waypoints for my flight so let's go to now it's already selected CAS in the advanced waypoints because I selected CAS here so let's go oops not that one let's go add for that add waypoint let's put one here for taking off and let's name it what do you call it when you're heading out from the airport, I've totally forgotten. Um, let's just call it takeoff. Um, and we'll do a turning point. Let's put it at, say, 1,000 feet. Speed 270, that's fine. Now, naming waypoints, you don't have to do. It will just go off 1, 2, 3, 4, and in the briefing, you can say what each waypoint is. Um, I name them just for the purposes of some planes do have that option to actually see it on the HUD like the A-10 you'll see the actual waypoints um, listed on the HUD which is very cool so I usually get in the habit of naming my waypoints so let's have one takeoff let's just keep it simple let's put one here and call it the ingress point IP let's make that 15,000 speed a bit higher 350 and you can see the time changing so it would take five minutes to get to there 
Um, and then let's do one more waypoint, say back here, and we'll call it um, target. <laughs> Can't think of anything. <laughs> um, and let's put another one at the end here. Targets and point. No, I don't know. Um, and then let's do one here, egress, and one back at the airfield. Now I'm going to make that landing. Now let's go to these two points here, my target points. Now this is very important. Now or I started these waypoints 15,000, if I click here, go away. You'll see I set that one as 15,000. Every one that follows will be 15,000 after that. So this waypoint three is my target waypoint, which is on the ground. Now set at 15,000. I do not want it at 15,000 for all my um, flight using TGPs or referencing anything on the ground. You want that at ground level. So let's press zero. It's going to default to 36 because that's the height of the above sea level for that. Um, and that is extremely important. So make sure you don't miss that step. Probably should have done it as I went, but um, as long as you go back and you check all your target waypoints and set them to zero, and egress can be a bit, say 10,000. All right, so I've got my six waypoints set up. So they're gonna fly, take off, IP at Pody and they will hit the target waypoint and they'll be on the ground if they're using the TGPs and they'll be able to scan between here and here for the convoy and they'll have some threats. Now because I'm a cold and dark start here uh, my flight basically I've got that set up I've got a little mission take off take, hit the convoy have a bit of air threats and that so that is flyable but by the time I take off a lot of this stuff, uh, well, this flight should still be here, so everything should still work. And the convoy is going to take 50 minutes to get there, so if I just played that as a mission, it would work. Um, what I'm going to do though is a tip that I usually do um, is click another plane, put it down. Let's call this test. So I'm going to have a test flight a plane. Because I don't want to have to take off each time, I just want one in the air, ready to go. And always put a test plane down, make it client. Uh, let's give it some weapons, just for the fun's sake. So I can show you that screen. And I don't have to worry about tail numbers, all this is just the test flight. So let's put him at 15,000 feet. And let's give him a waypoint of on the target here. And put that zero feet. All right. So when I spawn in um, as a client, I'm going to put him fifteen thousand. He's going to fly in um, at fifteen thousand, and I'll be able to see everything that's happening. And I find it handy to have a test flight, especially when you're. Well, as I get to in the next video, you'll see me working with triggers and. That's how I'm going to test them all. So jump in. Yes. Start. And there's my test flight. Fly. And there I am. It's just working on autopilot. So I've got my flight. I've got the enemy flight. I've got the enemy convoy moving and I have a mission and I can test it let's see I forgot to put a TGP on didn't I that's smart of me <laughs> anyway that was my plan all right so I'm gonna leave it there that is the basic setup of just placing objects um, an enemy and waypoints 
Next, mi next video I'll go into how to trigger all these um, on late activations so they come in later in the mission and not at the start of the mission and in subsequent videos I'll also show you how to add um, what do you call them tankers and other aircraft carriers and other things that will go into the mission AWACS and all that uh, but next I'll do a, a video on triggers I'll see you then